بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد فان احسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار <coughs> Today we're looking at chapter 42 in Kitab al-Tawheed and this is uh, titled Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah He titles the chapter Babu Awlillahi Ta'ala Fala Taj'alu Lillahi Andada Wa Antum Ta'lamun chapter concerning the saying of Allah or the speech of Allah the Most High and do not set up rivals to Allah whilst you have knowledge فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادَ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Part of the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah So Shaykh, Shaykh Salih Al-Fawzan he uh, goes on to give an introduction and an explanation to this uh, title and so he says that when the shaykh rahimahullah says Bab qawlillahi ta'ala chapter concerning the saying of Allah the Most High what this means is, what, what he means by this is what has come regarding the tafsir, the explanation of this verse from the statements of the Sahaba because as, as will follow he then brings uh, a statement from statements from some of the Sahaba uh, explaining the meaning of this ayah. So the Shaykh says, as for a tafsir, as for uh, a tafsir explanation of the Quran, how is it known? It is known by or known from the speech of Allah, because the speech of Allah, some of it explains other parts of it, or it can be known from the speech of the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or it can be known from the speech of his companions. Or it can be known from the Tabi'een who are the students of the Sahaba, of the companions. And these four are the, or these affairs are the sources of at tafsir So the speech of Allah itself, because, it ex- because some parts of it explain others. The speech of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The speech of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And the speech of the Tabi'een. And the Quran is not to be explained by way of opinion or by the speech of the later people meaning the late comers, those who came after the time of the, 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 you know, the, the, the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the best generations those people who never directly took from the, the Messenger Ali Sallam, or who never took from his companions so the speech of the late comers, the later people it is, that cannot be considered a source, rather the source of explanation of the Quran are the four things that have already been mentioned and this is because uh, the Shaykh explains because Allah revealed the Quran and he entrusted the explanation of the Quran to his uh, messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah says وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيَّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ that we have revealed upon you or to you the remembrance that you may explain to the people that which has been revealed to them so this shows, meaning that which has been revealed to them from their Lord so this shows that the, that the one entrusted with explanation is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he conveyed that to the Sahaba and the, and the Tabi'een learned that from the Sahaba so therefore the Shaykh says the, uh, the sources of the explanation of the Quran as has been mentioned by the scholars, are five things. Five things. First of all, tafsir, the first source, is the tafsir of the Qur'an with the Qur'an. Because, as has already been mentioned, the Qur'an explains itself. Parts of the Qur'an explain other parts. The second source is explanation of the Qur'an by the speech of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he is the explainer. He is the Mubayyin, he is the explainer. The third source, the tafsir of the Quran with the explanation of the Sahaba. 
from the Sahaba because they are the direct students of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fourth source, and this is in the view of some of the scholars of Tafsir, or some of the scholars of Tafsir, uh, which is the explanation of the Quran with the statements of the Tabi'een, because they took directly from the Sahaba, and they are most knowledgeable of the meanings of the Quran than those besides them. And the fifth source, the one that comes after all of the previous four, is explanation of it, of the Qur'an, in accordance with the requirements of the Arabic language, because the Qur'an was revealed in the Arabic language. So therefore, when we understand that this is how tafsir is made of the Qur'an, then we will understand we will see that the author, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, in this chapter, not, in, not just in this chapter, but in other chapters as well, he brings tafsir of the verses, he explains the verses from the speech of the Sahaba, and likewise the speech of the Tabi'een. So you will see that in Kitab al-Tawheed, in fact littered throughout Kitab al-Tawheed, are statements of the Sahaba and statements of the Tabi'een, because they are one of the sources of tafsir. And then, as for the verse that Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab includes in the title, which is the saying of Allah, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ This is basically the last part of a verse. It's actually the last part of a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. And the entire passage, uh, in, in, it's in fact two verses, uh, the entire passage is as follows. Allah says, Ya ayyuha al-nas wa'budu rabbakum al-lazhi khalaqakum wal-lazhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon al-lazhi ja'ala lakum al-arda firasha wa samaa binaa wa anzala min al-samaa imaa'an fa'akhraja bihi min al-samarat rizqan lakum fala taj'alu lillahi andada wa antum ta'lamoon Translation of, yeah, uh, rough translation of which is, O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those who came before you in order that you may have taqwa. The one who made for you the earth as, uh, an, or, as, a, as a spread out, uh, uh, something which is spread out, and the, and the heaven as a canopy, and he revealed from the sky water by which he uh, brought out fruit um, as a means of sustenance for you. So do not therefore set up rivals to Allah whilst you have knowledge. So concerning this verse, the scholars say, Sheikh, the Sheikh Salih al-Fuzan says, that the scholars say, this is the very first call, meaning it is the first call which is made in the Mus'haf, in the noble Mus'haf, meaning it is the first command, the first call that has been made. When Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nasu u'budu rabbakum, O mankind, worship your Lord. Right? So this is the first command that, has, that comes in the Qur'an. And this command comes actually uh, immediately after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the beginning part of this surah, He has mentioned how the people, or He has divided the people into three uh, types. So in the Quran, uh, in, in the beginning of the Quran, Allah has divided the people into three types, and this command comes immediately, or comes after Allah's discussion, or Allah's categorizing the people into three types. So, what are these three types? The first type are those who believe in the Quran, both outwardly and inwardly, and indeed they are the they are the muttaqun. They are the ones who were mentioned at the very beginning of the surah. When Allah said, "Hudan lil muttaqin, alladina yu'minun bil ghayb," right? Those meaning uh, this is a guidance for those who have taqwa, those who fear Allah, have piety with respect to Allah. Those who those who believe in the unseen, and Allah continues to describe them right right up until He said about them, "Ulaika ala hudan min Rabbihim," that they are the ones who are upon guidance from their Lord. So the first group are the believers. 
The second group are those who disbelieved in the Quran 